Welcome everybody to the NFL presidential address for week six of this NFL season. And if you've never watched this show before, I'm going to go through almost every single game on the board and tell you how to bet each and every one of them. I will pass on a few games along the way, but as opposed to previously, when I pass, I will still kind of give you guys my thoughts uh, on that game. Two. Last week was exceptional. If you watched this video last week and bet all the plays across the board, you made yourself a bundle. I had a four and two day for my clients on Sunday, and I left a lot of winners on the table. But anybody who buys my package or watches these videos got those winners too. For instance, I didn't play the under in the New England game, but I gave it out on the show and to my clients, it won. I didn't play the over in the Jacksonville Indianapolis game. I gave it out to my clients and I put it on the show. It won. I also love Dallas. Didn't get to the window on them uh, as a bet, but all my clients get all my thoughts on every game and it won. And all of you guys won with it as well. So we're going to do the same thing in this video. We're going to start right off the bat with the Sunday game in London, England between Jacksonville and the Chicago Bears. Now, the line here was Jacksonville plus two, still is, and the over and under 43. A ton of betting syndicates have come in on the over already, and that has been bet up to 44 and a half. And that's a big line move because both 43 and 44 are key numbers in betting NFL totals. A 2020 game normally ends at 23 at 24 is also an important number as 20 or 20 is a score that happens a lot so to go from 43 to 44 and a half is a big deal and it has taken a lot of the value out of that play i will say this as of now i'm passing on this game i do lean towards jacksonville as they are the more travel team this is a team that basically lives in London. I mean, I can't even remember a year where Jacksonville didn't play in London. They know this trip well. They have a veteran team, and they should be able to handle the time zone difference uh, very well. So I do lean towards Jacksonville, and I do lean towards the over, but I'm likely not going to get to the window on this game. Now, before we get into the Washington-Baltimore game, a game I love and one that looks like it should be just a massive shootout, I want to give you guys a promo. It's the same promotion we ran last week. We had a lot of you guys subscribe to it, uh, and that is NFL 99. You get my entire month of NFL plays for $99. Go to my page, wt.buzz uh, forward slash LP, and there it'll be. Use the promo code NFL99, a full month of my plays. And what you'll get is a lot of this video, all the games, uh, analysis all the way down, all my client bets, my Circa bets. My Circa bets last week went four and one. This is basically a, a weekly report packed full of information, six to seven pages. So make sure to take advantage of that promo code. NFL 99. Okay, let's go. Washington, Baltimore. It was Washington plus five on Monday. Tons of money have come in on Baltimore. It is now Washington plus six and a half. That's a huge line move. The over and under, though, has stayed steady at 52 and a half. Now let's get into it. The Commodores, as of now, are the story of the season. Uh, Daniels has been absolutely lights out. He's already set two rookie QB records. And honestly, guys, who you pick for MVP if the season ended right now? I would pick Daniels. That's how good he is. This Washington team is second in the league in points scored at 31 points per game. They're also top of the league in yards gained. Uh, top five. Defensively, this team is middle of the pack in almost every category. As for the Ravens, down by 10 points with six minutes to go against Cincinnati, and the Ravens pulled it out of their ass. This is a great sign for a team looking to win the Super Bowl in a game they really needed to win. But there were some bad signs in that game as well, especially their defense. It seems to me like they've had one good defensive game all year, and that was against the Buffalo Bills. And based on what the Bills did in Houston this past Sunday, 
maybe the Bills offense isn't really that good. As I've been saying all year, this is not your Ravens D of old. Baltimore is the seventh worst in the league in points allowed. They're in the bottom half of the league in yards allowed. Second worst team in all of football in stopping the pass. They are, however, number one in stopping the run. Conversely, this they might have the best offense in all of football. The Ravens lead the league in yards gained by 40 yards. Like, it's not even close. By On average, they have put up 40 more yards per game than any team in all of football. They're also third in the league in points scored. Now, where are we going in this game? I cannot play against Washington right now, especially if they're getting over a field goal. But I also think they are going to regress. So that leaves us with one opportunity, and that is to look at the total. And although it is crazy high, how can we not look at the over? We have two of the top offenses in all of football on the field, two QBs that literally cannot be stopped right now, and two defenses that are struggling to keep points off the board. Sure, 52 is a high number. Not long ago, 55 and a half was a high number. If one of these teams gets to 30, this game goes over. And frankly, I think we see both of these teams get to 30. I think this game goes into the 60s. This game has around a 34-27, 34-31, 37-31 type of a feel to it. Square all day. I get it. But we're taking Washington and Baltimore over the total. Just a quick side note. Washington last week got 300 yards on eight plays against Cleveland. Baltimore also gets some big chunk yard plays. Take some wide receiver props over, especially if it's down in the 70s. And don't worry if this game looks slow. Both teams are going to score quick. Arizona going into Green Bay. The line here is five and a half. The total is 49 and a half. Great win by both teams last week. One thing that stands out to me about the Niners game was that the Cards D held firm in the red zone four times. And that included the Niners needing all four downs to move the chains because, well, they didn't have a kicker. But conversely, they did allow the Niners to move up and down the field on them. And stopping teams four in a row in the red zone is not a regular occurrence. Arizona has the six worst uh, is deep ends in the league and points allowed. S- teams are scoring 26 on average against them. I do think Green Bay's D unit is good, but I don't think they're great. Maybe say top half of the league. I know. It feels like an over to me. I get it. Here's the problem. We're going to pass on this game, and I'm going to tell you why. Why would we bet a game that has a team, Arizona, that on one hand can put up 41 points and then the next week 13 and then they put up 42 points and then they put up 14 points this is a team that can score 40 points or 10 points and they don't send out a memo ahead of time they are an impossible team to bet on or against right now simply because they are wildly inconsistent i don't want to bet on or against teams that are inconsistent Although I do think this game will go over, I am passing. Houston, New England. Houston is minus seven. It was 38 and a half. Now it's 37 and a half. Well, guess what? We have to look at the under here. Normally, I'm looking to bet overs in Houston games, but man, without Nico Collins, this team just isn't the same. Collins scored a 67-yard touchdown in the first quarter of the Buffalo game to put Houston up 14 to three. Then he got a hamstring injury. Then Houston put up nine points in three quarters. Even with Collins, this offense only has averaged 20.4 points per game. And even if they get 24 in this game, can we really expect New England to put up 15? As of now, the Pats have averaged 12 and a half points per game. Nothing suggests that's going to change. Again, like I said last week, we don't overthink New England games. We don't overanalyze New England games. We don't over handicap New England games. We just take the under. And if May plays, we take the under. If Jacoby plays, we take the under. We are taking the under. 
I do lean on New England plus the seven, but why not? Why mess with that? Under in the New England-Houston game. Tampa Bay, New Orleans. Line was New Orleans minus two and a half. Uh, now it's New Orleans plus two and a half. Total was 45 and a half. Now it's 42 and a half. Is that reflective of how bad New Orleans looked at times last night against KC? Likely it's reflected on the fact that we have no idea whether Derek Carr is playing or not. If Derek Carr is playing, I love the over. If he is not and the line stays at, plus, at minus two and a half at Tampa Bay, I love Tampa Bay. That's pretty much all I got for you on a game where I don't know who is or isn't playing. Cleveland, plus nine against Philly. Before I get into that game, I want to tell you guys, again, please use that promo code NFL99. If you haven't already, it's a month of all my NFL bets for only $99. It's a spectacular deal, and I'm going to have an incredible October. Okay, Cleveland, plus nine against Philadelphia. The total in this game is 43. The Browns came into the season with high hopes. Now they have no hopes. This team is a total mess, and we all know my thoughts on them. I've been clear since day one. You go out and pick up a guy who sexually assaults over 100 women, and you expect the sporting gods to be kind? F the damn Browns. That's the sports fan in me talking. Could care less in regards to betting. Good thing the Browns spent all summer revamping their offense, hey guys. Really shows. They've just been killing it, you know, not being able to score more than 18 points, not even one time all year. Some teams have scored 18 points in a quarter. They have the third worst offense in the league in points scored. They're the absolute worst in yards gained. Their passing game is third worst and their rushing game is sixth worst. As for their D, I told you at the beginning of the year they were not great. Last year they were amazing in preventing yards but they were medium in preventing points, which again is the only thing that matters. The Eagles, I think their coach oozes cool. He makes Aaron Rodgers look un ugly. My wife freaking loves the Eagles coach. However, none of that matters. He's a shitty play caller. He's a crappy clock manager, and clearly his team doesn't like him. Something is seriously wrong in Philly, but hey, they're coming off of a bye, and they are getting Brown and Smith back. Where am I going? I'm going with the over. Yep, even though I pointed out how bad Cleveland's offense is, we're going with the over, and we're doing it for many reasons. Not only is Philly coming off a bye, but they're getting their big guns back. This will completely change their offense. They have had their they now have their speed speedster and Smith to open up the entire field. They have their end zone monster and Brown coming back, and he'll create a lot more space for everyone else. They also have had an extra week to get in sync and fix things up. This offense, when rolling, is dynamic. As for their D, they are medium at best. They should allow twenty plus points in most games, and a few games will even be higher than that. They allowed Washington 34 on them last week. Yes, I think Cleveland scores this week. I think we see Philly put up 28 to 31 points, and somehow Cleveland's going to get over 20. I like the over in the Cleveland-Philadelphia game. Indianapolis, Tennessee, Indy minus one. This total was 42 and a half. A lot of money has come in on the over it is now 43 and a half, and I agree. This Titans team is so confusing. Hopkins, Boyd, and Ridley as wide receivers, Pollard and Spears in the backfield. This team is loaded with offensive talent and have done nothing. They also have given away, I mean literally gift-wrapped presents and handed them to teams. They give away wins. The bottom line is, if Levis doesn't turn the ball over, this team can beat anyone. They went into a bye beating Miami, and although that ain't much, they got to feel a little better about themselves. They're not out of it yet, and they've had two weeks to practice and prepare. They know they had the Bears and the Jets and gave it away. They know they can beat this indie team. Just don't turn the damn ball over. I think the Titans talked about turnovers for two straight weeks ad nauseum. 
I think they've schemed offensively for this indie defense. And I am convinced they're going to put up points. I like the Titans to win this game. And I think they start turning their season around. But I also do like the over. Don't get me wrong. I like the Colts. I think they're a team on the rise. I love Richardson. And this team can score and score fast. With Taylor and their running game, they are set up for some huge chunk plays in the passing game. And we see it over and over again. The total is only 43 and a half. And I think we see the Titans score at least 23 points. This Indy D is mediocre at best. They just allowed 37 from Jacksonville and 24 from Pittsburgh. I also think we see Indy get into the 20s here as well, as they have every single game but one so far this year. They just put up 34 on Jacksonville, and I know that was with Flacco. They also put up 27 against Pittsburgh, and Richardson put up a lot of those. Richardson should be back. Taylor should be back. I like the over in this game, and I like Tennessee plus one. Now we turn our attention to the Chargers playing Denver. LAC minus two and a half. It's now three. And the total in this game is 36. Three wins in a row for the Broncos. And that's despite a rookie QB, a struggling run game, and a totally beat up O-line. Way to go, Sean Payton. For the record, four of their starting O-line are either out or seriously injured right now. This Broncos team is playing absolutely lights out defensively. They've allowed an average of 14.6 points per game. They are tied with Pittsburgh for second in points allowed. They are third in yards allowed, fifth in passing yards allowed, and just out of the top 10 in rushing yards allowed. The only D in this league better than them, the Chargers. The LA Chargers have held their opponents to 12 and a half points per game. They are fifth in yards allowed, fifth in passing yards allowed, and just outside the top 10 in rushing yards allowed. Why am I telling you all this? Because, hey, we're going with the under. Yes, I know, it's low. And yes, I know, we've seen Denver put up 34 points in the Raiders against the Raiders and 26 against Tampa Bay. But this game is 17-13 written all over it. In five Bronco games so far, they have scored 10 and 6 points in two of those five. So we know they can go a full game without putting up much. As for the Chargers, they put up 10 and 10 in their last two games. So again, we know they don't score much. The Chargers have gone under six games in a row and every single game since Harbor joined their team. Uh, the Broncos have gone under three of their last four as well. And in their last four games, They've held opponents to 18, 9, 7, and 13. I know this number is low. I love betting low numbers under. Take LA and Denver under the total of 36. Now we move to Pittsburgh and the Raiders. Pittsburgh's minus three. The total here is 36 and a half. And I am mad at myself for not taking the under on the Sunday night game against Dallas. We're not going to make that mistake again. And we'll be looking to continue taking the Steelers games under all year long. But not this game. I got a better bet for you. Again, an injury-riddled Dallas Cowboys D unit who has shown itself to be, well, really bad. They held Pittsburgh to 17 points. Fields was 14 for 25 with 138 yards, 138 yards. Oh, my God. What is he in Chicago again? He did put up two touchdowns, but man, let's be honest, he stinks. Pickens, who supposedly is always open, had two catches. Two catches for 29 yards. Way to go, Arthur Smith. Good game planning. Oh, my God, this team can't do anything offensively. Even though this pit D caused three turnovers against Dallas, they allowed a 60% third down conversion rate, and that was worse then the 53% conversion rate on third downs they allowed to Indy two weeks ago. With that said, Las Vegas is not Indy or Dallas, but we are still getting three points at home in a, an important game. We're going to take them. I know the Raiders have issues. I get it. They just got beaten bad by Broncos, but this team has put up 18, 20, 22, and 26 points in the last four games. And most importantly, under the Antonio Pierce era, they don't seem to lose back-to-back -back games. 
This team is perfectly zigzagging. They started the season losing to the Chargers, then they beat Baltimore. Then they lost to Carolina, then they beat Cleveland. Now they just lost to the Broncos? Well, it's time for them to beat Pittsburgh. I want to bet the under here, but I am worried about how bad this Raiders D actually is. Although I don't think Pitt can take advantage of that. As I've said many times, a eunuch can't have sex. I do think it might be a 24-20 type game. So where are we going? We're just going to take the Raiders at home plus the three. Next, we turn our attention to Atlanta. Plus, minus five and a half, now six against Carolina. Total 48 and a half. Bet down to 47 and a half. Well, I'll bottom line this. I really want to take the points here as I don't think the Falcons team has shown us anything to suggest that they have earned the right to be a road favorite of six or more against anyone. With that said, man, how can you bet this Panthers team? It's like hold your nose and pray they show up and don't do anything stupid. I'm going to lay off this game, but I do lean on the Panthers, and if a seven does come up, we are going to take it. Detroit, Dallas, the Lions minus three, the total 52 and a half. I see no other way of betting this than to go over. Yep. I love betting low totals under. I also love betting high totals over. Dallas was the number one scoring team in football last year at 30 points per game. This season, they've only averaged 23 and a half points per game. Detroit was the fifth highest scoring team in football last year at 27 points a game. This year, 26 points a game. Although the Lions did finally break out with a 42-pointer against Seattle, I don't think either of these teams have put it together offensively yet this year. Let me bottom line this. This number is high, very high. But like with the Baltimore game, we only need one of these teams to get into the 30s. And I think we see both of them get there or at least close. Dallas's injury problems up and down their defense. And even though they held Pittsburgh to 17, the Lions should have a field day on this team. They have no pass rush right now. Their secondary is in shambles. And Goff and his weapons should be able to put up 28 to 31. As for the boys, I know they have struggled to find their offensive rhythm, but they have still scored 19 or more points in every game this season. They just played one of the best D units in football and put up 20 on them. And not only did they put up 20 on Pittsburgh, but they went into the red zone three times, three times and came away with a zero. They could have easily put up 30 plus points against the Steelers. This Lions D is mid at best, and only one game this season have they kept a team to less than 20 points. Seattle put up 29 on them. I think we see Dallas also get to 28 to 31 points. So regardless of how high this number is, I think we get to 56 points minimum, and I think we get to somewhere around 64 points. If I had to bet the side, I would lean on the Lions, but I don't. We're going with over the total. And the final game of the NFL presidential address week six, the Cincinnati Bengals minus three and a half against the New York Giants. 49 is the total. There are some threes out there if you want to bet Cincinnati. So let me take this game apart. The Giants team manhandled Seattle on Sunday. Sure, the Hawks have a blocked field goal. Sure, the Hawks were a blocked field goal away from tying the game. But if you look at the numbers, this was a lopsided game at every level. The New York Giants kicked ass defensively, offensively, and in special teams. And they did that without neighbors or Singletary. One thing that should really come into play this Sunday is the pressure the New York Giants are getting on opposing quarterbacks. They had five sacks against Geno, and they lead the league in with 22 in five games. And... Cincinnati's O-line is horrible. I don't know how you can take Cincinnati here, guys. This team has fallen apart. And although their offense is still trying, their D is horrific. They allowed Lamar to put up 348 on them with four touchdowns. They couldn't get a stop where they when they needed it. I also don't know how you can take the Giants here, as they have been so damn inconsistent. We have to look at the over in this game. And although I don't love betting overs in Giants games, We were on the over against Seattle, and that cashed. This game feels kind of similar. Although the total is six points higher, 
since he has a better offense than Seattle and a worse defense than Seattle. This Cincinnati team, they're averaging 28 points a game, and that includes 10 against New England in game one. They have put up 38, 34, and 33 in their last three games. Those are insane numbers. There's no reason to think they're not getting at least 24 in this game. As for the Giants, their worst game offensively was 15 against the Cowboys. But excluding the blocked field goal, they put up 22 against Seattle. It was really 29, but we'll give them 22. And they put up 21 against Cleveland. We also saw Danny Dimes put up 257 yards in the air with two touchdowns. Everyone has scored on Cincinnati. The Ravens just scored 41. Carolina put up 24. Washington put up 38. Kansas City put up 26. There is a potential chance, albeit unlikely, that if a eunuch was going to score, he would be doing it on Cincinnati. I think we see a 27-24 type of a football game and I actually think we might even get it higher than that. Take over the total of 49. And lastly, real quick note, take a look at New York Giants tight ends over on props. One of the biggest things the Cincy D is struggling with is stopping tight ends. That's it for the NFL Presidential Address Week 6. Make sure to use that promo code NFL99. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel and comment as often as you can. I read them all and I respond to most. Lots of love, everybody. Let's have a winning week.